Okay, my friends, very excited today. I look in, I'm looking at Fermi Lab, which I check their research basically daily, and they today come up with what is luminosity? All right, what is luminosity? I've been telling them, look at uh, my stuff that I do is, is this right here. Let's see if it's right here. Oh, here it is right here. Now, we accelerated light. Which they say, oh, you can't accelerate light. I said, yes, I can, very easily. And the reason is a Venturi. And that, that is what they're designing right now for their equipment because I've been pushing them. I don't know if it's had my, my effect on them, but I, I, I know they're watching because they are pinching now. So that they're coming head on this way and head on this way and slamming them together here. And, but they're going to focus them in on both sides. Before, they were just letting them pass by each other and hoping something would hit. Now they're going to redesign it so they have a magnetic field here, a magnetic field here. So as they come in, they get really slammed together. And they say it should increase it at least by a factor of 10. Well, this is accelerated light. This is fission. And this is fusion. This is the holy grail. And we started with light. So there's no debris to sort through to try to figure out. There's, they're using hundreds of billions of protons. And we're using photons. These are like thousands of times smaller than just a proton. So we're down to where we can actually see the individual particles. And I'll just show you those. But I am so thrilled that Fermilab is finally looking into this. But there's no need to stay away from this. This is the particle accelerator we can use right now. Because I could show you, we can get the muons and the electron neutrinos right this instant. And we can focus them and we can regulate them and we can just harvest them continuously 24-7. It's not just an accidental collision. This is because we focused the particles. And that's what I've been trying to convey to all of them, CERN and Fermi Lab and Lawrence Livermore, JPL, all of them, 100%, right across the board, all the universities, and I have had no responses. So it, it, I, it appears that they are watching. I'm going to take it at that. If they're not, tell me, oh, this is none of your stuff, this is none of your stuff. Well, I think it is. I think you're picking off my work, and, and thank God. I, I'm, I, and that's all I ever asked for. I'm not saying I, you know, I want credit for it. Who cares? I want this stuff to turn into free energy, and here's how you turn it into free energy. And I don't care about any money either. Money has nothing to do with this. This is only to try to get free energy for people that have nothing. The people are like in, in, in these bombed out areas. Just think of the devastation, how much energy is going to be required to fix all this nonsense these people are doing. And if we could do it, and this is literally for free, absolutely 100% free. Once you build it, zip, done. And you could build this for under $100. And this should power a house at least for that kind of money, for literally forever. This is all solid state, nothing to do other than you may have to replace this panel every now and then, which and when I say every now and then, maybe every six months or a year or whatever, because it's going to be some heavy-duty molecular manipulations going on here. And eventually, they will burn out and wear out, absolutely. But these, this per percussivites, they call them now. There's a transition metal films that pick up a lot more energy than they were with the solar panels that they have now. Because the solar panels have to go outside and they're protected under all kinds of weather conditions. So they have certain characteristics that preclude using the kind of stuff we're going to use. This would be inside. This would be in a shoebox. Basically about the size of a shoebox. You power your whole house. That's raw energy, it's supposed to be 200 and times, it's 207 times more energy than we started. All right? If all we use, if we took 10%, 20% of this and came back to keep this going and harvested another 80% or 50% or 20%, I don't care. As long as we can come above break even, we got free energy and we can power the world with that free energy. Planes, trains, cars, boats grow food, recycle the water, go out in the fields and put out the fires and all kinds of things, remediation with, and all this can be used for nuclear re remedia remediation too because this, well this, that's a whole other story. Let's start with this. We can accelerate light, this is no question, and that particle is a particle, hold on. You can see the beam coming out of here. You see it accelerating. You see that smash. Now let's see what it happens. 
Now, this is what Fermilab wants to see, is the muon neutrino, which I showed you before, is a black ball, and the electron neutrino, which is the white ball. And when they shower through this new medium, which is what we did with our Venturi, we separated the muon neutrino from the electron neutrino. The black ball is the muon, it just went on its way, and it couldn't get through the Venturi, so it had to go around. The white ones can crush down, and they went through the Venturi, and created those showers, which is these right here. This is it right here. The black balls cannot compress, they cannot con concuss, they could, I mean they concuss and smash, but they bounce back out because they can't get through the tiny, 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 tiny slit right there. Well, the white ones go through. And I'm going to tell you what, I think we could do the same thing with oxygen and hydrogen, water. My father ran a car on water, but it was so it ran so powerful that it cracked the pistons. Hydrogen, when it explodes, it is just unbelievable. Now, you got H2O. What's the difference? Hydrogens are in my book are 1,839 electrons each, but they're stable at that point. They'll stay together unless you hit them with with sparks. Oxygen is 29,000 electrons. These are, here's what the hydrogen oxygen looks like together, H2O. So you got your hydrogen, that big black ball. Just like the big black ball here. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. And then you put a little slit here that only lets the hydrogen go through. So the hydrogen can get through, but the oxygen can't. And then you put some way of getting that oxygen, you put a filter out up to through the top or something, and you, you collect that hydrogen. You could literally use these injectors right in the cars we have now, if you design this correctly, the, an injector, and use water as the source. You may have to put some other chemistry in there because the hydrogen is so explosive that it, it literally will break the pistons. The explosion is so phenomenally gigantic. But you would have to add the hydrogen back to the oxygen and let it combust and drive it just like the um, um, gasoline does now. Same thing, the Venturi. It's all this Venturi. It's all the Venturi. They call that atomization. Atomize it turns them into atoms. Well, we want to turn them into neutrinos, and we did. Sterile neutrinos, electron neutrino showers. We did it, and we might be able to do it with water. But if we can do it with light, it's basically the same exact concept. Well, okay, my friends, we have seen that we can separate the particles. The black and the white can separate. And the black goes around, the white turns into showers. And the, this is the reason. The white can expand and compress because it is smashable. It, it is absorbable. It absorbs the particles that are in front of it that it's crashing into, or, or not absorbs them. It, it gets excited by them. And the black doesn't. The black does nothing. This is dark matter. It's, all it is is attraction to the white. And so uh, to me, it's gravity and dark matter. Here's what this particle does. It attracts white, and it smashes the hell out of things if it's flying like from an atomic bomb, and I will show you that without question. These burn things. These sma these are bowling balls. These are little matches. They just fire. Now, can I prove it? Yes, I can, and I will. And what they are looking at is protons. Okay, I am working with photons. Photons have a back-to-back -back particles. That's it. And a photon is just these little particles here. Photons, I mean, well, electrons, make up an atom, all right? So when you look at an atom, you see all these little glowy, you see the atom glowing back at you. Well, all you're seeing is the white parts, because once you add these all together, the white parts don't want to be next to each other, so they coat the black. And here's what it really looks like if you took inside of it, there's where the black part is, is inside all the white parts. So now when you have a nuclear explosion, the whites go out first. And then some of the black ones trail behind them and go with them. But the first thing that hits out is all the white ones, because they are all on the outside, completely coated in copious quantities. They take off. What do they do when they hit something? Watch this. All right, this is Adam Central, teapot, 
test where they blew up these houses to see what would happen, an atomic blast. So here it goes. Boom. Okay, I'm going to stop it. What do you see? You see an enormous amount of radiant energy, which is the, the white ones. The only white ones are the only ones that radiate. The black do no radiation whatsoever. So, it's in my mind, what we're seeing right now is an irradiation of only the white particles. And they have no mass, or well, no impact value. Let's put it that way. I don't know about mass, but they have no impact value. Now, watch what happens. Look, it just burns. It just burns. It didn't go flying. It's just burning. Watch it. It keeps burning and burning and burning. Now, I'm, this is obviously very slow in, in real world lifetime. This would have already been blown away. But you can see there is nothing, however, than burning. So we're not concussing at this point. All right, burn, 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 burn. Everything's burnt. Boom. Now comes the black particles. Why was there that delay? Well, the black particles were inside the white particles. The white particles came off first and just burnt everything. And now the black ones, the little black pieces are coming behind them and just knocking everything away. They didn't burn anything. If those were the white ones, this would be burning, not burning. Now watch what happens. The black ball that started this whole thing pushed all those electrons away. It says, hey, you guys got to come back. And it all turns around and comes back. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. What would you expect for a regular explosion? Everything goes out and just keeps going. Well, not in this case. Watch what happens. Out it goes. And then now watch. Watch over here. All this stuff starts turning around. It's not going further out that way. It's turning around coming back. You see it? Why would it do that? The reason is the black stuff is the gravity. And it wants the white guys to come back. All right, I'm just going to explain to you really quickly. This goes back quite a ways. The Russians were in space. They injected plasma into this vacuum chamber in, in zero gravity and expected to see all of the particles line up and so, sort of push each other away at certain distances and make sort of a formation. And instead, what it, this is what happened. All right, instead of a clean lattice, it came up with an empty void. They expected it to line up like this. And look what it's doing, bouncing around like that. And I understand that because that's exactly what electron flood theory predicts. And they, they still have no idea. A guy from Max Planck locked, locked himself in his office for several weeks because he just freaked out. And they still have no idea what caused it. I know exactly what caused it. Electron flood theory shows all of this stuff because of the dipole nature of electrons. And the fact that the dark matter can separate from the white matter. And nobody's ever suspected this. I never suspected this. This is just totally out of the blue. I never went, well, I've been looking into electronics and, and the dipole nature of atoms since I was in, in the Army in 1968 with the Nike Hercules missiles. And I realized there's no way in the world you can have a big positive core and tiny little negatives. It wasn't true. So I had to get out of that because nobody would speak to me about it or even talk to me about it. And they just wanted to fail you and make your life destroyed for speaking about things like that. And still to this very day. And now I have all the evidence to support myself. And I see Fermilab, or not, I don't think it's Fermilab, I think this is CERN, LHC, is, is basically doing the same thing we're doing. They're, they're using a, a choke, a venturi, a, a, a restriction. And, and they're restricting on both sides and then crashing them in the center and still getting debris that is just debris. We started with the most basic of particles, light, and split those and showed this. As you have seen, we showed this. This is the division of the particles, fission, fusion. If we can break right in there, we can harvest this before it gets back to that and create that kind of energy like I showed you burning that house down. Because that is nothing more than subatomic nuclear energy. And this is it right there. Free energy. Alright, so let's get started.